Welcome back guys to game number two in this lower bracket match between Quanto and Ranger. So first things first to start things off on Simulacrum here on the bottom right we got Kun aka Malaysia's Ranger on that red toss. And on the flip side here on the top left corner of the map is going to be Enrique or Indonesia's Quanto instead of playing that purple Purple Protoss, absolutely regal yet again, and taking that first map by a literal storm. Stampeding on his opponent, just getting more and more immortal value along the way. And sure, a lot of pesky stuff done by Ranger to begin with. He was able to get some really good hits onto those mineral lines with the oracles. But at the same time, it feels like he never really capitalized on his advantage. I would have said that as soon as Ranger was ready wearing middling and raring to go with those stars it should have actually went for the attack as quanta was a little too busy chasing around those oracles to begin with and losing the oracles there really opened up something for quanta it opened up an opportunity and since he was behind anyway he knew if he prolonged the game he would still be behind i'll allow ranger to build more and more and Quanto was like, screw it, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna go for the fights and having those more immortals, having that early robo facility working out in his favor in that ground game. But you know, I digress. I also showed a little bit of my dislike for the Adept build, basically, especially in this patch. But you know, I'm a lover yet again into the new one since the attack speed is now back in to begin with. Anyway though, we do see twin pylons nearby, but do both see it? That's the real question. Seems like it's not the case. Ranger as well as Quanto having similar proxy locations. And we'll see if either side will be able to capitalize on that. So the last time we saw Ranger, it was game number 5 between him and Strike. And he surprised everyone with that proxy pylon into the DT, into that main base, protecting the... Uh, main as much as possible, preventing anything from getting up on top to get that scout. And that reverse sweep won for the ages. Honestly, one of the best matches here in the C games that weren't broadcast for me. My personal favorite has to be Mio versus Ender on the upper bracket finals. That was absolutely, absolutely, you know, heroic. That was absolutely clutch. And now the Ranger actually killing Quanto's probe. It was just dancing around and it seems like the star is gonna do the same. Forces out to cancel. No pylon in the way this time. And basically the pylon is just to prevent any kind of probes to go into natural to get any scouting or to come back from the scout to begin with. It's honestly just a pesky thing to do. Anyway, it seems like Ranger has realized that he is gonna be more comfortable if he decides to go for a similar build as his opponent into the robo facility we go two gateways already starting things off with that sentry and potentially we are gonna see mech versus mech into this one hallucinated phoenix those brought out here and now by ranger will quanto actually think that the stargate is out and about or will it just be oh you know it's a hallucination you know it's all gonna be fine anyway ranger already fending off an attack here from quanto in the meantime the phoenix up and above and Quanto has been thinking, okay, that's taking a lot more damage than I would expect. Can he get take down onto the Phoenix to get confirmation? That's the real question. Seems like it's not going to be the case. But he's like, feeling confident, you know. It's just staying there. It's just going to die. And he knows the Sentry is on the other side instead of that air tech. So yeah, it really is just a mirror matchup by this point in time. Both sides deciding to go for a tried and tested build. It's not cheesy at all. It's something you can rely on for pretty much almost every matchup to begin with sentries stalkers and mortals such a well-balanced composition they cost gas they cost minerals and overall it's gonna be a resource sure but you're not really gonna be in a uh what do you call it? you're not gonna be floating one specific resource to begin with because everything is all balanced out anyway ranger though sending things off the adept's gonna be on that natural into the psionic transfer looking to make it to the other side shield battery too late to get into the way and here comes the recall right here right now from quantum ranger could have actually canceled that one but he still wants to force those units out of position three probes already go down beautiful force fields to trap these adepts and can they stay alive is the dps enough though the sentry still not gonna be the best tanks in this scenario extra damage there from the adepts and one sentry does go down still a big hit courtesy of those scouts from ranger and he's able to get into that main base, see the robo facility, see that war prism, and anticipate an upcoming attack. Now the real question is, what does Quantel know? He doesn't know about that robo facility as of yet, and especially this robo bay. 
In the meantime, Ranger gonna have this proxy pylon that won him game number five against Strike. Same location, different units. And into the transfer we go yet again. Nothing in the way. Into the main base we go. And something Ranger has been doing so well so far, even though he lost that previous game. Was really the hamper on this mineral line being as pesky as possible. One of the adepts does die. The second one cannot get on away. And overall, it's a tit for tat situation. Similar to game number one. But this time, Ranger trying to stay in a ground based predicament. He's staying alongside his opponent in terms of that army. And now into the Disruptor we go. Last time we saw Disruptors here from Ranger, there were games that it was a miss, and there were games where it was absolutely an oh so hit. Still though, more and more hampering onto that mineral line. And Quanta has to be really annoyed by this point. It's like, can you leave my probes alone, man? Can you just lay off to begin with? And for some, you can go for a shield battery onto that mineral line to keep their tank here. You can also go for the forge into the cannon when you go for the upgrades to begin with. But by the 6 minute mark, neither side deciding to go into that forge tech as of yet. It really is about unit quantity over quality right now. No plus ones for either side. And more and more disruptors here and now for Ranger. He is going to be supply blocked though. Seems like his pylon does get spotted by that immortal. And Ranger having the second pylon here on the right hand side. And interesting enough, Quantal on that low ground will not be able to see anything going on here. He's trying to be cheeky, he's trying to be sneaky, but right now it seems like he shot himself on his own foot. In the meantime, the observer gonna be spotting out that hallucination yet again. Easy clean up there. And it's a calm before the storm here for both sides. First time I've seen that these two warriors have really not gone for any big attacks. It has only been adept so far. And it's been a lot of respect and a lot of you know, a lot of friendliness in this competition. It really is just about getting as better of a macro as you can. Ranger right now trying to stay ahead of that one. But in the meantime, Quantal deciding to use some of that resources to get back in the worker count. And this does allow Ranger to get ahead in that army to begin with a gravitic drive here. And now to get some more movement speed. Hurt to see of those warp prism and the disruptor. Gonna be on the inside again but still does... Quantal know of this, seems like that Observer might spot that one out and knows Disruptors are on the inside if he was paying attention there. In the meantime though, already going for that main base into Twin Phoenixes, we go for our, our Purple Protoss. An interesting approach here from Quantal. He is going to try to use those Gravit Graviton Drives to the Gravitic Beams to lift people up and take them down. In the meantime, here comes Ranger Disruptor looking for that Nova, and it does get a hit on the one, make that two! Stalkers go down, and the Warp Prism is going, going, gone with that extra speed. Phoenix still giving chase, and can the Phoenix keep up with the movement speed upgrade? That's the real question. The chase is on, the Fast and the Furious into the recall. We go instead as uh, the Warp Prism gets cornered. It's time to get on now, it says Ranger, and it's time for him to go for the attack. Quantal, seeing, uh, getting his over, over, Observer Overseer, Oversight, anything. Observer, guys. Letter O. The Observer gets spotted there. And right now, the Warp Prism is racing for revenge. This looks really good here for Ranger. He got a good surgical strike onto the bulk of the army to begin with. Either killing them or putting them low, and now the Phoenix is up in the air. Might not be the best decision here for Quantal, as these stalkers are a lot from Ranger. It's gonna be a dozen and more and more coming. In the meantime, it's gonna be hallucinated disruptors as well, just to try and trick his opponent to going for the illusions instead. The real disruptors in behind, yet again, lagging as well. And this might just be the biggest bamboozle of them all. I, I can already hear Aegis screaming as here comes the Nova. But still, that's going to be a good graphic beam on to those disruptors. It seems like the channel is going to be canceled basically. Here we go with another Nova. And that's a huge hit yet again from Ranger. We already gave him the highlight last time for having big, big Novas. The disruptor hallucinations do turn into dust. But still, this is looking good here for Ranger. Times 2 basically on that army count. And here we go with the attack yet again. That disruptor though out in front will get taken down. Three Immortals trying to be a hero. But they are going to get little down to absolute zero. Because the Nova going to connect to V6 up the air. And Ranger will take game number 2. By this point, if you're the one hampering your opponent and you're left to go for a macro game, it really is a change of pace. How would have Quantal gotten back at this? Probably did this. If he probably did that same thing on game number one, it would have looked either a little better for him. But by this point, Ranger has decided, you know, I'm just going to play your game. I'm going to make sure that I have a sufficient army 
to fend you off. I'm not gonna overcommit in dealing with your economy. I can do that with just adepts. And such a good response there from Ranger getting those disruptors as well to get some big novas. I love seeing him go for that warp press and movement speed as well. Absolute surgical precision with those novas. And in the meantime, Quantal having a good idea to get the, Fe the Phoenixes to lift those disruptors up to cancel the channel to begin with. But at the same time, just not enough firepower on the ground. Same, same scenario. Having that extra air power is only utility in these uh, matters of composition. What you want to do instead, if you are going to go for that Stargate, you can get for that Void Ray. For smiling alignment or two might help out in whittling those units down to begin with just before the Nova pops. But even better, if that Blink Stalker can be used, the Stalkers can be saved. Immortal, of course, when the barrier is up, you can just try to tan things out. But there are a lot of micro decisions that every player needs to make in StarCraft. And saying these things are basically hindsight as well as just having the capacity to observe over actually play. Being a player in StarCraft is hard, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one for game number three.